The recording is now in progress. And please remember that all of these great informational videos that we're having our Zoom meetings will be uploaded to um, the Fleecy YouTube page for later retrieval. So we're excited about that. So um, Walter Drew, we're gonna turn it over to you, my friend. Okay, good. Um, well, for everybody who's present, I'd like to welcome you to this very first play chapter meeting of the new year, the Florida Association for the Education of Young Children. Um, we have a very special evening planned for you, a very special guest. Actually, we're all very special guests, but we have another very special guest that I'll introduce in a few minutes. But first, just uh, a couple of words about the play chapter. Um, I think for this evening, just before we begin, I'd like to dedicate one minute to creative contemplation, just to get us present. If you wouldn't mind joining me for 60 seconds, I'll keep time. And the idea here is just to relax and get here fully. Close your eyes if you don't mind for just 60 seconds and start with two or three intentional deep breaths and let them out slowly and just sink into that for 60 seconds beginning now. Okay, so that was exactly 60 seconds. Um, before we officially begin, a word about the play chapter. Briefly, the history began back in 2007 as a collaboration with the National Association for the Education of Young Children's Play Policy and Practice Interest Forum. And then it kind of shot ahead as a play committee and evolved a couple of years ago as an official statewide chapter within the infrastructure of the Flacey organization. And we're delighted that we have that position within the group. The, the mission really is to develop leadership and insight around the importance of play and improving its practice across the state with all our early childhood educators and parents, and also to involve businesses who have a keen interest in having employees who are very adaptable, flexible, resilient, and creative, willing to open up and share a way that's pure and helpful to their growth, for the people themselves and for the organization. And that's really the heart of what we're trying to do with this play chapter. A key piece of the work began with the play space at the annual conference. We'll talk a bit more about that. Julie's got some really nice pictures that are put together to show some of the activities that were going on during that time. We did that for two years in person. And last year we did a virtual. And as you know, this coming, I think it's October, is a in-person conference for our state organization. I'm very excited about that. Perhaps in a few minutes, this special guest will have a few more words about what that is and other things the play chapter is doing. The key piece here really is for us to develop ourselves a much deeper appreciation for how important
play is to help important play is not just for kids, but to help parents and teachers understand and deepen their understanding of play, the play chapter exists. The whole idea is to practice play, not listen or read about it, but actually do it. That's the whole idea of normal play chapter meetings monthly is to have a little play experience and build upon that over the year. And we're gonna be doing that in the, play, the book play chapter. This, it's a practicum. So each month based on the previous discussions and readings, we're gonna actually ask people participating to do a play with their children and come back and share what's going on. We like to hear the voice of the teachers or whoever it may be who participates to share the joy of the experience or the problems that arose as a community of practice, which is really what this state organization is offering us as a chapter to provide that kind of context for in-person interactive learning, which is key in the best. There are uh, facilitators. Um, I'm one of the original facilitators. I'm a lead facilitator. Julie was one of the original fa uh, facilitators, people who started this, along with Jackie and Ryan from Miami. Some of you might know them. And Julie Croker was part of it at times. She's a young mother on the west coast of Florida and has children she's care for. But she'll be back. And so Tommy Spidell. So that's in brief. Um, the idea is to serve our early childhood community by strengthening play through hands-on practice, through little things like the book study and the evenings of play um, and periodic announcements on Facebook. And we're just, we're really just very privileged to have the forum that's been offered to us by our organization. Uh, in brief, that's my introduction. It's, it's my pleasure, however, just before we go to some exciting slides and things, is to introduce a young woman who is a mother. She's a practitioner of early childhood education herself. She worked, I think, for probably eight years in the classroom in the school that her daughter worked. She was a preschool teacher. And then she became a director of the program for 11 years. There's other stuff that she's done that I, perhaps she would tell you about a little later, but also she's our, the, really the director of professional development for our state organization. And she's also the coordinator for the member services. So if you have any special services that you'd like, she's the person to speak with. It's this my, my honor and, and privilege introduce a colleague that I'm actually very fond of. We don't know each other well, but I have a feeling the way I feel about her now, that's just going to grow. That's the same way I feel about Julie Perry. Thank you, Julie, for being a leader and an advocate for what we're doing. I so appreciate your determination and, and, and friendship in doing this work. So all of you who are present, Christine and Keisha and anybody else who might be there, we look forward to hearing from you in a few minutes. But right now, please clap your hands and welcome Wendy Occupinti. Did I get it right, Wendy? Yes, you did. You did. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank <laughs> wow. you for being here. I Wow, I feel fantastic after that introduction. <laughs> you are fantastic. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that is, if, if that's the only reason you come to play chapter, it's amazing. No. <laughs> uh, um, yes, I, so I am, my name is Wendy Occupinti. I've been in early childhood for 20 something years, 22. I forget, lost count now. Um, I love early childhood. That is my passion. Children, uh, parents, staff, absolutely my passion. Um, I am now, I've just been made full-time at Slacy. So I am the, my official title is member service, member services manager, which pretty much means I do everything with members, which is pretty much everything Slacy does because we're a membership organization. So I think that was Chris, 
Duggan's way of getting me to, to help her out with everything. <laughs> but um, I had a nice talk with Dr. Drew the other day, and I'm going to talk with Julie and, and just so excited about all of the things that the play chapter is doing. Um, I experienced the play chapter at the summits for the first time, and I fell in love with um, Julie and Dr. Drew and what they're doing and all those recycled materials. Some of them I could not stop touching. I was like, I, I want to take them home. Um, and I think it's great. It's, it's a lot of great content that we can do with um, the children in the, in the classrooms. But I think it's also great for self-care for the teachers and the adults and even for parents because you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you take care of others? So I think there's a great, um, you know, synergy with that, with this play chapter. So we have a lot of exciting things coming up, the book study. Um, so excited about the playroom at the conference that we're going to be in person. So excited about that in October. Um, I know we also talked about some other professional development courses to do and classes to do. So there's lots of fun stuff coming up. And I'm so excited to be part of this. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you very much for your support and being here. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I think right now we're going to oh, just open it up for a few minutes for conversation. Um, does anybody have anything they just like to ask or say about themselves? Christine or Keisha? Keisha, we invite you to put your camera on if you can so we can see you if that's possible. Um, Christine, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Tallahassee. Uh, I have a preschool here, uh, Answorth Academy, and but I am working remotely still ever since March 2020. I'm still working remotely, although I do go in for teachers meetings and and you know occasionally go in, but um, I have my 97 year old mother, who's the one that introduced me to Walt the Walter Drew Blocks <laughs> yeah. um, many years ago. She started Answorth. So she lives here. So I'm trying to keep her really safe. So I'm not getting that, you know, to work with children as much as I would really like to. Um, but we've been doing this. We started in Clearwater in 1968 and we've moved to Tallahassee. And so we just keep going on. Well, uh, thank you for coming this evening, Christine, and being an early childhood leader. You know, that's one of the goals of this play chapter. So we invite you to be an active leader in this, uh, this whole idea of building a community of practice. Thank you for being here tonight. We hope to come to every one of our monthly okay. meetings. <laughs> thank and you. Um, Kishia is, did I get your name right? Kishia Jenkins? Jenkins. Are you there? No, it's Keisha. I'm so sorry, my, my camera's off. I'm actually a mommy. So I'm in the process of being a mommy at this moment. I'll turn on really quickly here. Hi, my name is Keisha Jenkins. Hey there, Hi. good. I am yeah. also in Tallahassee. I am an early childhood educator by trade. I've done it for almost 20 years, um, but I'm currently the community and engagement coordinator. Well, I'm sorry, community engagement manager for the Children's Movement of Florida. Um, oh, but wonderful. For, Thank you. More importantly, I just really enjoy being um, a preschool teacher. And I actually also own, a, own my own family home child care center that I operate on nights and weekends here in Tallahassee. So fantastic. That's wow. Great. Good. Um, Keisha, I, that's so great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, you guys, you can put a note in the chat room. You know, if there's any question you have or any comment you'd like to add, please think of that as a place for you to journal virtually. Just put it in there. Also, your email address, if you like. You might also put your phone number, too, if you like. OK, good. Well, um, I think um, I don't know if there's anything else that I would like to say at this point. Maybe later on I would, but um, we're going to transition now to take a look at some pictures that Julie's put together. Is that right, Julie? Take a look that's, at them. That's yeah. my goal. Good. That's Julie my goal. Julie very, very creatively called this looking back to moving forward. 
So I'd say just relax for a few minutes and see what Julie so thoughtfully prepared for us. A little PowerPoint to make okay. uh, some visuals for us. You ready to go, Julie? I believe I am once I share my screen. And maybe okay. Our point is up, so we can do that. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. I know everybody's busy, 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 and we've always we've always got a thousand different things to do. So, first of all, thank you very much for taking that time. Um, Wendy, I did take the opportunity, just so you know, I did put your email in and your title while you were speaking. Chris, thank you for adding your information as well. And Chris, I want to commend you on keeping family first and taking care of your own family. Um, it, it, I've been using this, this statement for a little while is we have to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first before helping others. Uh, and that's that self-care that Wendy was referring to. And sometimes that comes down to the basic of just health. Um, you know, trying to stay healthy and trying to keep healthy and honoring, you're honoring your mother as has been uh, commanded to us to honor our mother and father. So I, I just thank you so much. And for Keisha, who is not only owning a business and as a mother and working for the children's movement, um, that self-care is just as important for her as well as is the rest of us. So I entitled this PowerPoint um, as um, looking back to moving forward because I wanted to share uh, visually some of the outstanding opportunities as members that you can receive from your engagement in the play chapter. And we did that as, as um, Walter said before, through uh, training such as the summer summits, um, our annual conference, both alive in person and abroad virtually, um, as well as meeting here online in our monthly meetings. And then um, I did not put anything about the book study. We'll, we'll talk about that near the end. So let's see if this works with the whole share your screen thing. Because, you know, there we go. All right. Is it everyone able to see? Lacey play chapter. Yes, thank you, Wendy, for that confirmation. And as we go through, um, if anyone has any dialogue questions or comments, please be sure to put them in the chat or make note, and we'll be happy to work with you um, on that at the end of it. So we're going to see if this works. So it says, welcome back to Placey play chapter, looking back and moving forward. Wonder, joy, discovery, and anticipation. So in 2021, we had uh, virtual, we had in-person summits, and then we had a virtual summit. These summer summits, the intention was to bring high quality speakers and knowledge to the masses throughout the state of Florida, from the Panhandle to Miami and a couple of places in between. And each venue, was very different based on the community that was being served in that area. Miami's uh, community was vastly different than that of Tallahassee and that also of Orlando and that of uh, Satellite Beach, Brevard County, Volusia County, Orange County. So this is just a couple of pictures of some of the setups. This is Dr. Drew opening uh, our section, there were different um, topics. We did um, motivational conversations, uh, I'm sorry, motivational interviewing, uh, had to do with some mental health. We did infant and toddler mental health. Um, and then we did this as self-care through play. This was another uh, version of it. You can see that Dr. Drew, I love this picture of you because you decided to wear a suit this day. And you really uh, talked about the difference between that suit jacket and another suit jacket. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. It was a playful banter just on the clothing. Um, and you can see that we just had such a sweet turnout, a very intimate group of people, a little bit different than our conferences, which can elicit about 150 to 200 people in a room if, if, if allowed. These are smaller intimate settings. 
And the idea of our summer summits were to bring people together, coming together. Now, mind you, we were, this was right before Delta, but after the big virus situation and people were literally ready to get out and, and mingle. And so social distancing and masks, and we, we really tried to make this uh, as friendly as possible and respectful to each other's needs. You can see here, where each of the participants were given various materials. And um, it was a great time kind of to reflect and concentrate with thoughtfulness and, and caringness of all of the different materials given and for each other. And this one, you can see it was individual, um, solitary play. It was a very quiet play. Uh, if you can see, I, I'll point this out, um, the lady with the headband, that's our one and only Miss Holly, who's our communications director at, at Placey. Um, and she, that was part of her play experience was to explore various materials. And she made this really fun headband. And at the end of the summit of this day, she was able to actually keep what she made. And I think she still has it at her house, by the way. And one of the things that we love about the play chapter is it's not just about the adults. It's not just about the young children. It's about all of humanity. From cradle to grave, play is an integral cornerstone or a foundation for human development. It sparks curiosity and problem solving with cause and effect. And you can see here, uh, this young man, he's 17. He's got the earbud in because that's how they roll. Um, but he was intent in choosing materials and exploring them. You could see one of the pieces of fabric wrapped around his hand for sensory input. And then that cautious uh, taking care of um, problem solving, how to put those little, little uh, foam pieces together. We really worked hard on um, presenting that. This was another one, uh, this was at the Gulf Coast and uh, you can see that the space is much larger, much brighter uh, in, in, up here in the Gulf. Uh, we were up in uh, Panhandle. No, we weren't. Yes, we we're in the Panhandle. And this was a before and after picture of just being provided open-ended materials. In this case, they were natural elements. Um, they were sticks. Those are crepe myrtle sticks that, um, that, I had, that I had brought. And I just brought what are called joining tools, things that bring things together, whether that's string, tape, stapler, um, stick attack, glue, anything that adheres one thing to another, we call it a joining material. And so you can see uh, the really um, smile of this woman up in the, the left here. She was absolutely, she knew what she wanted to do. She got a partner to do it. And you can see the after effects of her little teepee she made. Not only that, but down below her feet, uh, here is one of her fires, a campfire. And it was made out of rocks, a scarf, and some pine cones. And she'd gone around the room to gather her materials. And she was just so, you could see this satisfaction in her face. Other times we had um, table time where Dr. Drew's blocks and other open-ended recyclable materials were presented on a tabletop. And it, and participants were encouraged to explore those materials uh, for time, for a period of time to touch and to manipulate and to move and to experience the materials in a way that meant something important to them. And when we give ourselves time to reflect and just be in the present moment of enjoyment, then you're able to see these amazing creations that really may only mean something to the player and no one else. But that's the benefit of play because it's that person's own identity, identification of that experience. And so you can see this was again, our kind of a before and after type of situation. And these are again at our summit. You can see another set of materials being placed in, uh, in a space for people to explore. And yes, I wanted to demonstrate that we have men of all ages come to our events. Um, we try sometimes we think this is a really dominated field by women, 
but men also need to identify the importance of play and relaxation and fun in their lives. And this gentleman as well was able to uh, put this very methodically, mathematically symmetrical uh, together. I will say that this is my husband, he's a <laughs> actor, but he's also a mathematician. And play and his ideas are very different uh, in his mind. And so this was a really challenging time to sit still and just contemplate and be present in the moment. So this was a real exciting time for him as well. And we understand through these summits that it was a time of curiosity and creativity by allowing people to self-reflect and decompress from COVID craziness. And if I could be daring enough to say that I think we still need to do that. I don't think we're out of the woods 100%. And I encourage owners and directors and leaders in their industries at the children's movement or wherever to make time for staff to have these opportunities to, you know, just be present in a moment to be creative and to explore and to relax and just have some fun. So that was a little bit of an overview of our summits. And um, I didn't put up the other speakers. Um, if anyone is interested in learning more about the other speakers, Wendy, myself, or Dr. Drew are, are able to provide that information. Now, what you see here is a banner of our play space at the Fleecy Conference. This is when we actually had people together. And this was a coordinated effort of many, many people bringing in their times, their time, their talents, their, um, the, just their creativity. Um, some, some of our facilitators, uh, Paula from Kinderoo brought in many aspects and play with light. Um, I love open-ended art and creativity through recyclable materials. So I brought those supplies. Our Miami facilitators brought in, uh, you can see the wind tube. That's the tube over to the right. Um, and then electrical circuits, Dr. Drew brought blocks and other large um, kind of gross motor boxes and things. And Tammy Spidell brought uh, dramatic play equipment. And we brought all of these materials into this giant ballroom. And we allowed teachers to be the child again. And it was just fascinating. These three girls were hysterical. They took the boxes and they just decorated and they found the light from one table and they found art supplies from another table joining tools to put the welcome to mars and they made this great box martian and look at their faces they were just so proud to create and just have the fun time at this conference being and working with among their colleagues and these ladies i remember these ladies they sat on the floor for probably an hour and 10 minutes gathering supplies. And they, and I didn't do an after picture. I'll show it if you, down the line if you guys wanted to email me. And it ended up being like some Cinderella castle. And they made all of these little princess out of recyclable material. It was the neatest project, but they really engaged with each other, talking, problem solving, creating a storyline. And when they first came in, I remember these ladies, when they first came in, they were overwhelmed and they said, we have no idea what we're supposed to do. And we said, there's nothing you're supposed to do. And I think that's one of the hardest things about allowing yourself to play and relax and enjoy is there's no necessary boundaries. And these two really had a challenge in the beginning with the boundaries and then opened up and then time took over. Here's light play. Um, you can see in the upper left, the lady in the bluish dress, that's Paula, one of our facilitators out of Orlando at Kinderoo Academy. Um, she has a school that's Reggio inspired, and she works a lot with uh, light and all, uh, and anything having to do with lights and colors and patterns, and she trains her staff on this. Um, she has a great Facebook page, it's Paula Lopez, you can check her out. And um, just a, an amazing display 
of designs and patterns and colors. And she allowed the participants to really manipulate materials, including overhead projectors and light ropes and other sources of light. It was really phenomenal. So this was a, a collaboration of two students who were not quite sure how to join these items, these bamboo poles. And Dr. Drew, I remember this as well, you really watched from afar and watched how they collaborated and really tried to problem solve. And I, you could see that their frustration was starting to rise. And like a good facilitator of play, you casually walked up and didn't invite yourself. You, you kind of asked permission in, in a certain way, um, a welcoming way that allowed the participants to say, we would love some help. Do you have an idea? And in the only fashion that Dr. Drew does, he suggests some options and they choose from those options. And then, you know, he, and they were able to build the, their TP um, out of these materials. And that's what it's about, collaboration and teamwork. This was our play space uh, science area. This was a wind tunnel and participants could put various objects in the wind tunnel and watch them rise and fall. Um, we put confetti in there one time. That was exceptional fun, but an exceptional mess to clean up. <laughs> Circuit boards um, and some cutting drawing tools that were on the table for people to explore. And it was really interesting about this. A lot of people were afraid, if you will, very, very hesitant about playing with electricity um, and, and getting it wrong, right? Oh, I don't want to do it wrong. And that's what I love about this opportunity. It's, it's science, it's exploration, it's cause and effect, it's trial and error, just delightful. And in the end, when they are pleased with what they've developed, what they've created, what they've explored, there's such a satisfaction, dare I say, a pride that comes from this time of introspection and play. This was our art area or open-ended reusable materials. Um, it, it's probably almost 12 foot long table with everything you could possibly want. We even put sh shaving cream there, which was a real interesting situation. And so people use everything they, they wanted to use. Um, they were set up in, in bins and little totes that they could carry back to their table. Um, there was no amount. You didn't have to take a specific amount. You were just, here's your tote, choose what you'd like to do. And so you can see this person is using their, um, on the left, their fine motor skills and their creativity. And again, joining tools, they used Play-Doh. Play-Doh was their joining tool to secure those things in a three-dimensional object. And then in the back, by the way, that's, so this was a, a birthday cake. And those were the candles, the toothpicks. And behind it was a muffin tin that this participant filled with shaving cream, decorated with glitter, and took another popsicle stick. And that was the birthday cupcake that they created. Super fun time. And just lots of smiles and enjoyment and engagement. And so I just wanted to sum up National Association on the Education of Young Children, um, five things to know about play. Not only do children learn through play, I think people learn through play. And I think sometimes people forget how to play. And so I think it's encouraging. Now that I'm working with senior dementia patients, um, I'm moving into that sector and I'm playing with them and watching them come out of their um, fog in their dementia worlds and engage in these playful activities that I've set up. And it's a new genre for me and watching people play. That play is healthy and that play reduces stress and that play is more than meets the eye based on the stories you've heard tonight and the pictures you've seen. And that playing and learning go hand in hand. And while you may already know these things, 
there might be somebody in your wheel of circle of influence that may not know these things. And so I encourage you to um, recap this, feel confident that you believe this, and then be able to share this with others. And if you're new to the Flacy Play chapter, you are welcome to join our uh, Flacy Play Space Facebook page. And also, um, I'm going to show you in a minute where we're located on um, the Flacy website itself on the play chapter. So looking back at the summits and the trainings and the conference and moving forward into 2022 and beyond, we really, really hope that our members are really able to grasp the entire spectrum of what we're offering through the play chapter, trainings, book studies, meetings, um, collaboration together. And when we can impact ourselves and then impact those around us and impact our children and their families, then the state of Florida is going to be in an amazing position for successful adults and competent learners in our, in our field. So thank you for letting me take that. I know there's some comments in the chat. Um, I know that Ms. Jenkins had to leave and she said she'd read the recording um, earlier, uh, later on too, so. That was neat to look back, Julie. Did you think like about it? those times we had. Thank you. Sure, yeah. sure. I'm looking forward to our time again in those halls with all that play. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Good. One of the things that we had talked about uh, is the summer summit in the future, the summer summit dates, which are looking to be from between April and May. I don't have the exact dates, uh, but once we are, once those dates have been solidified, uh, they're going to be, there's going to be three places around the state. I don't know if a virtual option is being held this year. I think that's still in discussion. Um, but I know that it will be on some Saturdays in April and May. So as soon as we get those dates, uh, we'll get those out to our members. And then you're able to share with the staff and other uh, people. Um, we wanted to let you know that we are planning our monthly meeting. The day may change. We've been, Walter and I have been discussing what are our members, what's a better availability for our members. So there might be a survey coming out from Holly um, with regards to days and times. You know, are nights the best? Or would a lunchtime during nap time be more feasible? Or a different day of the week? Walter, um, anything you wanted to add about our monthly meetings? Yeah, typically one thing we're not doing tonight that we normally do is actually have a hands-on play experience. Mm -hmm. We feel it's so critical as adults to engage as we would hope the children do it. So we're practicing what I call self-active play. It's really a mindfulness practice where you enter in virtually, we're doing it as a silent, solitary experience. It's like creative contemplation and a meditation, followed by journaling, even for a few minutes. So the next meeting that we have, we will be doing that. Each participant brings with them some open-ended materials, preferably something you haven't played with before, but you're interested in, for, authentically curious about what you could do with these things you happen to have. Yeah, um, there's more to say a little later, but uh, Julie, I think you wanted to continue with a couple of points. And also, if anybody has any questions or comments that you'd like to put right into the potpourri, that would be wonderful. And we, maybe we should pause and say, hey, listen, does anybody have a question or a comment you'd like to ask? Or think something yeah. you're thinking about pursuant to anything we've been talking about so far this evening? Anything come to mind and you're wondering about anything? 
Mm -hmm. I was just um, looking at all those pictures from the summit. Um, I'm, I'm so excited that the conference is going to be in person because, you know, being in the early childhood field for so long, I loved going to trainings and conferences and learning new things and, and interacting with people. So um, that, and it just brought all that back because they were, they, especially the, the first summit in Miami, I think that was, I had just started. So it was my first introduction to being back with people, you know, even just in the education field, because I moved from New Jersey and I was out of work for a little while. So, um, but it was just so nice. And it just, I'm really looking forward to the summits and I'm looking forward to being together again. Yeah, good. Same here, Wendy, yeah. Yeah. Walter, yeah. would you like to take a moment and explain an upcoming, um, February event, you were mentioning the, 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 I think it's the virtual play art making and sculpture. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. February play. Oh, that's yes. What the that virtual? is. Yeah, good. Um, there are several organizations that have collaborated to basically do what we're calling virtual play experiences, hands on virtual play experiences. And one of the supporting groups is the Florida Kiwanis Foundation, who gave us uh, several hundred dollars to set up virtual play experiences. Um, and this, uh, the 11th one is going to be in the month of February. And they're usually an hour and a half long, and it's always on a Saturday. Um, and we'll be sure to let you know about that. And it, it's, it's part of a sponsoring by the Florida Association. And Wendy and I were talking the other day about getting CEUs for people who might want to go to a whole series of them as a member benefit, which leads me actually to come to one of the other things. I think we've said a few things about the book study. It's going to meet four times, February, March, April, and May. That February date is February 16th, and that'll be for one hour and it'll be dynamite. Um, and it's a practicum. I think I mentioned that earlier. People actually have a chance to practice some experiences in between with their children or at home. And then the April play training. Wendy, you remember we had conversation about that. Um, the April, they, 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 would you want to say anything about that? Would, what you were kind of imagining about that? Um, or, well well, we were talking about it being um, a play experience. And then um, I think we were talking about with learning standards and like that it's going to be open <laughs> to all people, you know, yes. and it's separate from from the, the chapter meetings, but it's actually a professional development opportunity. And we thought it would be a great way to get people even outside of Flacey to mm -hmm. learn about Flacey and to also, um, you know, get more members for your the play chapter, more members for Flacey, um, if we open it up and offer CEUs, because I think people are really, um, they need those CEUs and they need different trainings. And I, you know, I've been in Florida for a couple of years, but, you know, I worked in a, in a center for a year and a lot, and a lot of times there's those, you know, online trainings where you're kind of clicking and, and, oh, they're, they're, I mean, the content is good, but they're not very, they don't energize you, right? They don't get you excited about what you're doing and, you know, and ignite your passion for teaching children. So uh -huh. that's what I see. Yeah. Um, something like that for, because you, you see the passion with what you are doing. Yeah. And, it, and it's contagious. Yeah. And I think more people need to see that. Yeah. And that one would be in person too, that we're, that we're yeah. imagining that one. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a date for that one? You haven't said, oh yeah, April 9th. Yeah, April we do 9th. have a date. April Thank 9th. You. Do we have a time? Probably three hours, and we're not sure. You know, we'll have to talk a little more about that. It could be three yeah. You know, we might just ask, Christine, just think about this for a second. Imagine you were going to be going to that. 
just out of curiosity, what time on a Saturday made sense for you? Three hours of hands-on play with others. What'd you guess? I'd say 12 to three. I don't know. 12 I have to a, three. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or, I, nine, to, nine to 12 would be good. I mean, one of those. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And that could be for CEUs too, for people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we know where it's going to be held? What's that? Do we know where it's going to be held? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. That's something we got to figure out, Wendy. Where is it going to be held? Yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out that. We got to figure out, um, you know, getting with Holly and marketing the, the book study that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. away. Oh, yeah, let me know moment. about this play training and, and the standards and things because that's one of the things at the when I teach college is exactly that it's how to incorporate the floor developmental standards the floor learning standards in everything they do yeah. yeah I think they do a lot more than they they think they know to do um it's just bringing that to mind so if I can be of any assistance in that please let me know I'd, I'd love good. to do that good yeah good <clears throat> You know, um, this is a bit of a digression, but I've been working with the state of uh, Virginia, the Office for Children. Um, this is a short story. Three years ago, the Office for Children had an executive director of a program called Young Children Initiative. And they bought a number of sets of Dr. Drew's blocks. And at that time, they put them in the closet, put them in it, they had 30 sets and that was three years ago. And it was about four months ago that I got a call from Dr. Yang. She's the director. And she said, Dr. Drew, uh, I, are you the person that made those blocks? And I said, I was. She says, I'm a new director. And I opened the closet and there were 30 sets of your blocks in it that have never been taken out. Oh my gosh. Would you consider doing training for that? And we made an arrangement. I did a training. We didn't. We've done, the idea was, and the reason I'm mentioning this, it just occurs to me, I'd like to do this with the state of Florida. What it is, is each teacher, there were actually 24 family child care providers, family child care ed educators, imagine this, receive a set of blocks. For two hours, we have a professional development experience where we explore those blocks, document whatever it is, we talk about it, and then they go off for two weeks. Tomorrow night is the end of the two weeks, and we're going to do two hours of what happened when you presented those blocks to children. The teachers, it's, it's titled Storytelling About Blocks. They get to tell their story about what they did with those materials. You know, it would be real. I'd, we'll talk about it another time, but I could wow. see doing that for, with a lot of different kinds of materials. I would include wow. sand play. You know, sand is free. Think of what you can do with clay with children. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll have to think further about that. But I'm very excited about the idea that the Office for Children is featuring those blocks in family child care. And we're talking now about doing it in center-based teaching. Center, imagine that would be kind of, everybody has the same material, which makes it exciting. Well, I'm digressing a little bit, but I did want to call this book to mind. I think you all know it. And that's what the book is for the, uh, the study. It's called Self-Active Play. Awakening creativity, inspiring, empowering self-directed learning, and inspiring optimism. Optimism. Well, <laughs> what's next here? Yeah, what's on the agenda, Julie? I got it. Don't you worry. Yeah, that's good. I, I got you. I, what I've done is in the chat, I've put the dates that we, I put each thing we just mentioned with the Thank you. Wonderful. times in the chat. So if you want to look back at that, you can, you can get the basic uh, dates and times of what we know. And the last one we need to know, Wendy, and I'll need your help on this, Wendy. What's the date of our live conference in Jacksonville? 
and of course, I'm going to have to look at my calendar because um, it's October. I think it's 13th, 14th. Oh, let me get it right. Um, it starts on the 12th, but the where it really opens up is the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th of October. Got it. Right yep. In Jacksonville. Yep. I just put it in the chat. Perfect. So the other thing I'd like to show you with regards to that, and I'm going to share my screen one more time, is um, our website uh, for FLACI. And it's, it's uh, FLACI.org, FLACI.org. You can learn everything about who we are and what we're about uh, through our About Us. You're also able to look at the conferences, pop-up summits. Uh, last year, we had a fundraiser called Race for Resilience, um, which I didn't talk a lot about, but you can see the conference there. Um, you can learn a lot about public policy and advocacy in our sections here, professional development as well. And then all the way on the other side of your screen, you can find the various chapters, including our play chapter. We are looking to update our play chapter part of the page. If there's anything as a member that you would like to see a part of, uh, part, uh, being a part of this, please feel free to add it in the chat or um, you can email one of us, that would be grand. Um, we plan, we have our Facebook page. I'd love to see an Instagram page as well, just because our younger generation is in that direction. Not sure about the TikTok yet, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how that plays out. Um, we're increasing on our YouTube as well. And then we'll have our events page as well. So I just wanted to direct you to this in case you had not seen it in the past is, um, is the FLACI website and then our chapter here. And this will be updated. Dr. Drew and I and some others are gonna start working on that. If you know anyone that would like to be a member of uh, FLACI, we encourage you, the, the Florida Association, we encourage you to send them to um, oops, no, sorry, wrong one, guys, sorry. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> there we go. I encourage you to redirect them to the FLACI.org website so that they can then um, get involved and become a member as well. Uh, also, another great thing about FLACI is their ability to guide facilities in national accreditation. Um, we know that centers that are nationally accredited are um, recognized Highly is providing high quality care. Um, and many times play is the main driving force in that. So I encourage you to take an opportunity as a member to be a part of this uh, website and then take advantage of the different opportunities that it provides. So I just want to make sure that that was there for you. And I will put that. Oh, yes. Sure, I can tell. I wonder if we could uh, take a few minutes and, and Wendy, could I come back and ask you a question? Sure. Uh, sure. Just what would, well, it's with regards to the play chapter, um, as, a, as a tool for professional development, do, do, you, do you see that as a, a connecting point to kind of inspire? teachers to become more involved to think about play oh absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah i what i love too is when you're talking about um playing and then having teachers come back and tell about what happens when they you know actually you know put it into practice i think that's such a great skill to teach, not only are they sharing their experience and other people are learning from them, it also helps them articulate what they've learned and what the children are learning, which also helps them to be able to articulate that to parents. Yeah. yeah. Um, which, you know, when I was a director, I would always explain to teachers that it's also our job, not only to educate the children, it's also our job to educate parents. Absolutely. Um, and to, to explain why are we doing, you know, people are like, oh, you're playing, you're playing. We are, but we're intentional about it. The things, the materials we give them, how we, the freedom we give them. So it's important to be able to articulate that to, 
to teach parents because you know it was funny when I was first teaching my my dad I would say but I don't understand why parents don't understand he's like well Wendy you went to school for that you you learned you know child development and yeah. play theory and all yeah. that and I'm like oh that's right I also have to educate the parents because they don't know <laughs> they only know what they grew up with so right yeah. yeah I mean I would love to even see um and I, I I'm not sure how feasible this is whether that's sponsored by uh, Flacey but I would love to do a parent training oh, yeah I really would I would love to have maybe a series of online conversation trainings. I know a couple of the coalitions around the state of Florida have done that, started taking it, Pinellas County being one of them. Yeah. Yes. Or Manatee, somewhere on the West Coast. And they're having quarterly parent engagement sessions. And one of them's even having um, dad or the male person in the child's life. Um, so quarterly dad sessions and some of it's just it's it could be behaviors it could be learning it could be whatever yeah it's just if we want to get the parents to buy in maybe we need to set the stage and start that if yeah that's be great you know i can um bring that to my director's group and see like chris chris what about you like with um you know your center absolutely i would love to share that with our families and, you know, if they had a date, if they could do a, a, a meeting like this and, and join, you know, after they get the kids to bed, maybe they get the kids to bed by seven, they can join or even a weekend. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. for them to understand the importance of play and that they could do it at home, if they could right. be collecting these objects and, and they'll discover things at their house that they could really turn into learning opportunities that are really playful. Um, yeah, I, I think getting parents on board would be very helpful because a lot of you know, teachers try to educate the parents as much as they can, but their right. time is limited with them also. Yeah. So if this was an opportunity where we could really say, you know, make a big deal of it from our center and send out emails and reminders and get parents involved, that'd be great. For offering this play training and it is successful with the members that we're looking to reach with this with this Lacey play training perhaps once we're done with that if it's well received and we want to then adapt that to a parent um, of our members you know i'm not i'm not sure how what that looks like yeah if we're going to if we as an advocacy agency believe that families are a child's first teacher, and we believe in family engagement, not just involvement. Uh, perhaps it's a conversation to lead by example. Mm -hmm. oh, I could Absolutely. see, I could see involving a, um, a, if you will, a certificate of accomplishment. Yes, there could be actually you know, parent training. It's play coaching your children or parent, and a certificate program. Well, there's a, a, a real sense of accomplishment, a whole series of those. Sure. The actual experiences of play and connecting that to the early learning standards for parents to understand that as well. Yeah, absolutely. The American Academy of Pediatrics and what they're recommending that their professional pediatricians do with children is the very same thing that the teachers are doing. And if we got the parents to do that as well, using play as a medium right. that sounds sounds like you're interested in that christine i we am and, and i also i keep hearing you um say talk about you know the, getting the teachers on board i think one thing that you know we have been so focused on getting through our reaccreditation and to help our teachers understand how uh they can relate this to these standards that that they're needing to prove in their portfolios. Right. You know, it's just, you know, it, it's, it, it works together. And I think helping them understand that connection, you know, how this, you know, what you're doing, all of this play, I mean, it can, there are so many different standards that it will meet uh, if the teachers are incorporating it and then taking pictures and documenting and that kind of thing. 
So would you um, consider would you consider Christine kind of joining us officially in developing this concept of working with parents in different ways? I'll, I'll do whatever I can. I'll be available. Yeah. We have a couple of openings on our staff, uh, <laughs> our, our volunteers, and Volunteer we'd staff. love to invite you <laughs> to help develop the play chapter. And this might be one of the segments. Would you consider being a facilitator? Uh, I will. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Good. <laughs> Wendy knows how busy I am right at the moment waiting for our Reaccreditation visit, site visit. So, yep. okay, good. A lot going seriously, on. That, seriously, this is important. You're, you're officially invited now, Christine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You'll be receiving an announcement soon. <laughs> <laughs> a certificate in the mail. Right? Uh oh. Right. <laughs> What have I done? No, no, Christine, seriously, there, there, it's, it's a no pressure. It's you have talents and abilities that would be well utilized in the, in the circle we're talking, but it is not, it's not meant to be, you know, oh my God, I'll, I'll let people down if I can't do this. Yeah. Know that the door is open. Okay. Yeah. That's the it's, having a playful attitude about that. yes exactly if yeah. well, i do believe that, in what you're doing so that's if you don't mind we'll just include you in oh. our kind of inner circle correspondence regarding okay this, christine okay okay sounds good christine did you did you put your email i gotta go way back in the chat i'm sure i did i yeah. did there it is Listen, Christine. you guys, it's a it's a little after, and I, I want to practice punctuality and not keep folks. And yep. I, I just want to be sure that we're okay if we were to end around this time. Mm -hmm. It's certainly ending on an upbeat, wouldn't you say? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Christine, if I can be of any help, my email is in there as well, especially with staff and standards. Okay, good. Thank you. Anybody and have any closing comment they'd like to make? I love our small, intimate, sweet group. And I'm glad this is being recorded so that others who are unable to join us now, you guys that are going to join us later on, we're so glad you're already coming part of this. And we hope to see you at the next meeting. Fantastic. Good. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the recording. All right. Goodbye. Thank you.